All right, what's up everybody? I am Richard Taylor, uh, back again uh, with a short video, and I'm going to jump right into it. Um, as you see from the caption, uh, I'm going to talk about real quick uh, the racist background or the racist nature of the name Tar Heels, which is uh, the nickname of the North Carolina State, but also, most importantly, it's the nickname of University of, of Chapel Hill of North Carolina. Now, I'm from North Carolina, born, bred, and raised. So, you know, everybody from North Carolina, nine times out of ten, either you are a Carolina fan or a Duke fan. And a lot of people I know are, are most likely Carolina fans. Um, you know, we had Jordan, we had Wardy. Uh, Vince Carter, a lot of great teams. Coach Dean Smith even had a you know close close friend you know graduate and play football for the University of North Carolina. However, um, the name Tar Heels, you know, we always cheer for the Tar Heels, and people don't really you know realize the sinister nature behind that name. Now, I was just made privy uh, to this information after speaking with a young man uh, about about a month ago. And I shout out to Sunini Langston, her son. I think his name is Basil. Forgive me if I, I mentioned his name wrong. But we were talking one day, and he told me about uh, where that name came from. So, of course, I didn't take his word for it. I went and researched it. And I found out the information to be true. So just let me give you, um, you know, what I found out. You know, everybody knows about the Civil War in 1861, uh, right here in the United States of America. There was this thing called the Civil War where the north, northern states were against the southern states because uh, the southern states were uh, enforcing slavery, uh, which, you know, allowed them to make more money, uh, you know, make more profit uh, with less uh, overhead costs, basically. So the south pretty much was defending slavery, and the north was, you know, trying to end slavery. And North Carolina uh, was one of the slave states. So in about 1861, I think the war started between 1861 and 1865. So there was a battle here in North Carolina uh, where the North was actually winning and there were certain troops of the South, or the Confederacy as they call it, started retreating. And so after the battle was over, you know, and, and, and the North had won that particular battle, it was a Southern general uh, who was given a statement. And he was talking about, you know, some of the troops had ran. But he pointed out this one particular troop in the South or the Confederacy that has stayed and fought and didn't retreat, right? So he was commending the troops. And, you know, I'm paraphrasing his words. But he said, well, that, that, that troop fought valiantly. You know, they didn't run. They stood there and fought and didn't retreat as if they had tar on their heels. And fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, that term stuck for the state and, you know, most importantly for this video, the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Tar Heels. So that story it's a true story. You can you you can uh, look it up as you want to, but you know every it it, it makes me look at uh, that name in a different light. Tar Heels. So basically, what we do, and all the black people who, um, you know, cheer for the Tar Heels, they're we're actually cheering for a namesake that was given as a a positive moniker or a positive nickname for people who were defending slavery. So we're, you know, and, and I love basketball too. I'm, I'm a fan, you know, I'm not a fan as so much people are. And a fan is short for fanatic. And we see the behavior when teams win or lose, uh, you know, the up and down the streets, tearing up stuff and partying, you know, very fanatic in their behavior. But um, I think that, you know, people, you know, really don't know the spirit behind things that we cheer for. And I, I never knew that in all of my 44 years until talking to that young man. He allowed me to reach research into 
you know, the, the, the racism behind that, that, that namesake. And I don't think a lot of people know uh, the racism behind that. And also the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Like I said, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be working with a guy right now who's doing a piece. He's a University of North Carolina Chapel Hill alumni. And he's doing a piece about um, some, of the, some of the systematic racism that still exists. Uh, just an example, there was, uh, there was a, a statue called Silent Sam. And Silent Sam was dedicated to the school. He was a Confederate soldier. Uh, and once again, the Confederacy defended slavery. So Silent Sam has been a mainstay on that campus for years and years, till about you know two or three years ago when students advocated to get it removed. Now, the reason Silent Sam is so important because it was dedicated, once again, by a self-proclaimed white supremacist who in his dedication speech when the the uh, statue was being uh, implemented, he said, well, and, and once again, I'm paraphrasing his words, but he said, it was only 100 yards from here when I beat a Negro wench until her skirt hung dry for disrespecting a white woman. Now, this is the man who uh, made the speech commencing uh, the statue to be placed on the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Uh, and also, and to, and to go a little bit further, there are several monuments and several buildings named after racist or uh, plantation owners or slave owners or, you know, self-proclaimed white supremacists in that school. And, you know, the, the student that I'm working with or the ex-student or alumni, he was very integral in getting you know, those, some of those names change and he's still fighting for that. But um, the racism in that school that we cheer so wholeheartedly for is still abounding. I actually, the student told me about Confederate rallies that are still or were still being held as recently as last year, if I'm not mistaken, or, or the year, year before. Daughters of the Confederacy rallies that were being held and when the students protested the university upheld the participants of these rallies and some of the you know the per the people who were having these rallies uh n were not actually students so um i just want us to think about you know some and of course people go to unc black people go to unc they they graduate they have a great quality of life i'm not disputing that but once again, we have to, you know, be cognizant of what we give our energies to. So I hope this has been a little bit informative. It was uh, for me still. I'm still learning uh, in, in helping my brother get his work out. But yes, man, the, the name Tar Heels was given to the Tar Heels for uh, a valiant group of Confederate soldiers who did not retreat. Because as the, uh, as the general said, they stood and fought like they had tar on their heels. So with that spirit, you know, with, with that name comes a spirit. You know, we think it's all fun and games. But, uh, you know, I just want people to realize what exactly are we cheering for. Uh, notwithstanding the Silent Sam and all of the, the Confederate rallies that are still being held on the campus that many people don't know about. And we're not even going to talk about the Duke Blue Devils because that name in itself, um, you know, just exudes evil to me. But, you know, that's just my little take on it. I know everybody's going to enjoy March Madness still. They're going to cheer for their teams. I'm not trying to be a party pooper. But this is some information that I came across and I thought it would be useful to share. So, um, once again, I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, once again, this is Richard Taylor. I'm signing out Taylor House Publishing. Thank y'all for watching all of my videos, for sharing them, and subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be with you uh, again with some more information. But once again, I thank you so much for tuning in.